Have you ever seen Brody in action? No, but I've heard he's an arrogant barrister. I saw him cross-examine Alistair Gregg once he shredded him. Took him apart at the seams. I'm sure some briefs I see this at heart. Got a kick out of making us look stupid. Not your average three-bedroom semi. Mm. They say crime doesn't pay. Detective Sergeant Beach and WDC Rorton. Is Mr. Michael Brody at home? Daddy, it's the police! About time. Show them into the study. In here. Yet. The officers last night told us to leave it. That's where the burger got in. Right. And you are? Emma. Emma Brody. You were in the house last night? The alarm woke me up. By the time I came down, Daddy was already ringing the police. Anyone else in the house apart from you and your father? No. My mum doesn't live here anymore. This will have to be quick. I'm due in court this morning. We're trying not to keep you too long, Mr. Brody. Yeah, I've made a list of what's being taken. Obviously, those things that caught the burglar's eye immediately. A pair of silver candlesticks, small statuette. Now, the main loss was a collection of antique coins. And they were kept in the display cabinet there. Ah, I've got photographs of the coins. Valuations written on the back. Six and a half thousand pounds. That's a King Charles I triple unite. Coins of the Civil War period are extremely valuable. I dare say. Well, I don't expect to see them again. Having the photographs might help. Remind me of the clear upgrade for burglary. Could you tell us what happened last night, Mr. Brody? Why well, don't you have the officer's report? If you wouldn't mind just going over it once more, I understand you disturbed the burglar. The alarm went off at 2.30 this morning. I got up immediately. I went to the top of the stairs. I could hear someone moving about in this room. I came down a little way. I shouted something like, who's there? Nothing very original. As you can imagine, I didn't want to confront the burglar. After a minute or so, when I heard nothing more, I came in and I found things as you see them. So you didn't actually see the burglar? No, I told all this to the officers last night. And there's just you and Emma in the house? Yes. Liz, do you want to try and have a word with the neighbours? Have we done? I really must go. Shouldn't we tell them about Tom? Tom? A young man who does some gardening for me, but he won't be able to help you. Well, if he's been working around the house during the day, maybe he saw someone nosing around. No, Tom hasn't been here for over a week. He's on holiday. Greece, I think. No, he isn't. I saw him hanging around the house. What? When was this? Yesterday. <laughs> Emma, you must be mistaken. I saw him. Detective Constable Liz Rawton. I'm investigating a burglary that happened next door. Oh, we were all woken by the alarm going off and I couldn't get these two back to sleep. Did you see anything last night? Anyone acting suspiciously? <laughs> what, at two o'clock in the morning? Of course not. <laughs> was there much taken? One or two things of some value. Well, I suppose that's what they call poetic justice. Why would you say that? Well, he does spend all his time defending criminals. It's the Brody house, just here. They've got in through the French windows round the back. Household hasn't cleared anything up yet, so let me know what you find. Okay. Thanks. Did you get anything? Just a lecture on how to deal with juvenile crime. The daughter reckons that the gardener's been hanging around the house. He's meant to be on holiday. Worth throwing a check on him. How's Mr. Brody? A pain. Don't I know it? Apparently his coin collection's insured for 30 grand. But you don't think it might be a scam, do you? Doesn't look like he needs the money. I'd love to see him go down for fraud. You wouldn't have a grudge against him or anything, would you? I mean, because he made you look silly in court. Got it here, Sarge. Thomas Boswell. Year in Longmarsh for burglary, two counts, released four months ago. Address on the Gurney estate, just like Emma said. Mm. Well, I know Brody was soft on criminals, but I didn't think he employed them. Do you not remember him? Sarge, you're down as the arresting officer. Yeah, Tom Boswell. Seemed to remember he wasn't a bad lad. Spent most of his life in children's homes. Steady on, you'll have us all in tears. Nothing great. <laughs> Alistair's hoping this turns out to be an insurance scam. Far be it from me to speak ill of Mr. Brody. Thanks. It's going to be hard to pin anything on Boswell if he turns up in the next week with the tan. Emma seemed quite confident it was Tom she saw hanging around the house. 
Can I help you? You're looking for Tom Boswell? He's out. Not on holiday then. You're the police. What, are you expecting us? You look like the police. Freddie Norris, isn't it? Yeah, I know you, don't I? WDC Wharton. I'm at Sun Hill now. I never forget a beautiful woman. <laughs> this isn't your patch. I've always considered the world to be my oyster. Detective Sergeant Beach. You know Tom Boswell? He's letting me crash here for a while. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Always ready to help police with their inquiries. Freddie was a bit of a pin-up for a while at my old nick. And then Her Majesty invited me to be her guest for five years. How could I refuse? How many burglaries did we send you down for? Not half as many as they could have done. But that last stint in prison did me the world of good. I'm a changed man these days. Bachelor of Arts with Honours, Open University, Sociology. When did you get out of prison? A couple of months ago. How long have you been in Sun Hill? About a fortnight. You're very curious about me. You angling for a date. What brings you around this way? I'm looking for a job, not having much success. You wouldn't believe the level of prejudice against sex cons. So how do you know Tom Boswell? I met him in Longmarsh. I kind of took him under my wing. Prison was a bit of a shock to Tom's system. Some people really shouldn't be behind bars. Mm. Miscarriage of justice, was it? I think he lacked positive role models. Fortunate for him he met you then. Sarcasm's very unattractive in a woman. What do you want with Tom? Just a chat. He's kept his nose clean since he came out. I can vouch for that. Were you a character witness? You know where he is? He does gardening jobs. He's gone to college, you know. You should have seen what he did with the prison garden. We thought he might have gone away on holiday. He was talking about it. Changed his mind. Decided to save the money instead. When are you expecting him back? I don't know. Well, we'll catch up with him later then. Thanks for your help. Why is it always sociology? Freddie's looking for a job. Maybe we should put him in touch with Brody. He doesn't seem to mind when Brody walks comes. You know, Norris, does this burglary sound like his Emma? One thing I'll say about Freddie, he was always very neat. You could get in and out of a house without disturbing the dust. Mm. And Brody's place looked like it had been turned over by an amateur, didn't it? Yeah, well, Freddie's a pro. I'd almost think he had a crush on him. Hello? Liz, it's Sergeant Ackland here. We've had a phone call from a Miss Emma Brody of 27 Ancaster Way. She wanted you to know that a Tom Boswell had been round to the house this morning. Apparently there's been some kind of a disturbance. He ran off about ten minutes ago towards the estate. Hang on. What was he doing here? He had the stolen things. What do you mean? I'll show you. Right, what happened? I was out on my bike. When I came back, I went to the garage to push away. He was in here. He was putting the things into this bag. I told him I was going to call the police and he ran off. Just leave everything as it is. We'll uh, get someone out here to fingerprint this lot. We're going to need a statement from you, Emma. I can do that now if you want. No, <laughs> that's all right. We'll come back later. Dad thinks Tom's so wonderful. I never trusted him or his friends. What do you mean, his friends? I was here one day when Tom brought a man around to help him in the garden. He didn't do much, just hung about drinking coffee in the kitchen. What was this man like? Quite old, about your age. He had grey hair and wore tatty clothes. Smoked those little cigarettes, the ones you make. Are you going to arrest Tom? We'll uh, come back later for that statement. Tom Boswell? Come here! Stop! Liz Rorton, Sarge. Could you put out a call on an IC1 male? Thomas Boswell, age 22. Five foot ten, slim build, wearing a check shirt and blue jeans. Come here! Heading west from the Gurney Estate, Sergeant Beach in pursuit. Hang on, Sarge. Sergeant Beach was in pursuit. Never mind, Sarge. <laughs> He's a lot younger than you.
there's anything going on between Emma and Tom. She obviously hates him. Could be a case of a woman's scorn. Know how irrational females can be. Ah, oh, Mr. Brody, you winning? Already won. Congratulations. What are you doing here? Oh, we're sorry to bother you, but we thought you'd like the good news. We've recovered your stolen property. You've what? Your daughter came across Tom Boswell in the garage with the stolen things. He seems to have dumped them there after the burglary. Tom is on holiday. Looks like he changed his mind. Decided to burgle your house instead. You arrested him? Not yet. We've been to his flat, but he ran away when he saw us. Any idea where he might go? Joe, I can't believe Tom would have anything to do with this. The evidence suggests otherwise, Mr. Brody. Looks like he put the stuff there, intending to go back for it today. I don't believe that. Uh, Mr. Brody, he may have been working with someone else. Someone else? Do you know someone called Freddie Norris? Uh, no. Apparently, he sometimes helps Tom out around your garden. I don't know any Freddie Morris. Norris. And who says this man's been round? Well, a couple of days ago, your daughter saw a man around the house. His description fits Freddie Norris. He's staying with Tom at the moment. Freddie's an old lag. He's done a lot of time for burglary. Well, I'm sure that Tom wouldn't have anyone round to the house who he didn't trust. You've got an awful lot of faith in young Tom, haven't you? Yes, I have. Did you know Tom had done time for burglary? Of course I knew. Well, you never told us about his record this morning. Because it's irrelevant. You knew that Tom had been in prison, yet you still trusted him around your house. He has put all that behind him. We get the impression that Emma doesn't like Tom very much. Teenagers tend to see the world in black and white. So they get an idea into their heads about someone and refuse to change it. They're like police officers in that respect. I'm telling you, Tom Boswell wouldn't steal from me. If you'll excuse me. Brody seems to have put Don's nose out of joint. Yeah, well, there's a word for people like Michael Brody. But I'm too much of a lady to use it. Please don't spare my feelings. What about Boswell? Nothing yet. What did you mean earlier when you said you didn't think he was a bad lad? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't normally feel any compassion for the two rags from the Garney. Well, there was something about him. Well, I'd like to nail him. If only to put Brody's nose out to jump. There you are, Liz. We've got visitors. Come on. This is Tom. We almost met earlier today. Nice of you both to drop in. You're going to arrest me? I told Tom you'd probably want to interview him under caution. And I explained to him that's not like being arrested. Did you? Thank you. It's a big misunderstanding. He can explain everything. I'm sure he can. Would you mind waiting here while we have a chat with Tom? Sure. Thank you. Come on. I'll be all right here, mate. You just tell him what you told me. I let myself into the garage. Go on. I fetched my tools from the shelf where I'd left them, and this bag fell down as well, and all this stuff scattered on the floor. Coins and stuff. I went to pick them up just to see what they was, and I saw there was Mr. Brody's coins. Go on. And Emma, Emma comes in and she must have thought I'd nicked it, but I didn't. They just fell out of the bag. Then what happened? Then, then Emma says something about the police have been around already. And I said I didn't know what she was talking about. And she said something about a burglary. And then you ran off? Yeah, I had to. She does my head in. And you ran off again when you saw us? I panicked. I thought you wouldn't believe me. Are you saying that Emma's lying? Yeah. No. She did see me in the garage with that stuff, but I wasn't nicking it. If I was going to rob them things, why would I put them in the garage? Mr. Brody says that he disturbed the burglar. Let's just say it was you. It wasn't me. Let's just say it was you. No, no! You legged it with the stuff, and what with the alarm going off, and you knowing Mr. Brody was up, you decided to put the stuff in the garage and go back for it the next day. No! Or maybe you had help. Fred is not involved! Did he tell you to say that? He, he said that with our records you wouldn't believe us. And, and, and we had to come in and tell, tell you the truth. I didn't nick anything. I didn't. Tom, why does Emma not like you? I don't know. Ever since I went there, she's done everything to get at me. She used to cut the heads off my flowers. Break things, pots. She's evil. Did you tell Mr. Brody? I couldn't tell him his daughter was a bitch, could I? 
Why didn't you go on holiday? I wanted to save the money. I'm going to college. I didn't think Mr. Brody would mind. Why should he mind? Well, it was him that gave me the money for the holiday. That was very generous of him. He's been good to me. I wouldn't steal from him. Well, can you and I have a chat? Well, look, is there somewhere I can have a smoke? Yeah, out here. You're letting Tom go. You help Tom out quite a bit, don't you? Gardening? Just the once. I was short of some money. If Tom didn't really need the help, he would have given me a few quid anyway. I insisted on helping the lad. I don't want to spend your for kid. This was at the Brody place? Yeah. I don't suppose you've got someone that could uh, vouch for your whereabouts at two o'clock this morning? I didn't think I'd need an alibi. There's no way you're going to find my dad's on this job. I didn't expect to, Freddie. Not from someone as experienced as yourself. But I am willing to bet I'm going to find Tom's prints on the gear. Oh, big deal. He explained that when the stuff fell on the floor, he picked it up. <laughs> now, I wonder how that's going to play in court. Why did you bring him in? You know the school. You can tell when someone's lying. It's obvious the boy's telling the truth. I get the impression that Tom's easily led. Look, I'm getting too long in the tooth to be playing silly mind games with policemen. For the record, I didn't do it. The important thing here is Tom. There's no way he would have next stuff for that house. It wouldn't be the first time. The boy's terrified of going back to prison. The only way I got him here was to persuade him. If he didn't, it would turn out the worst for him. You've seen the boy. He's not a survivor. Come on, Freddy. Spare me the hearts and flowers. He's had a bad time. There's no way he's going back. Did he ever talk about Emma Brody? Yeah. He's terrified of that girl. Was she there when you went round? Yeah. You know what she done when we got there? Poured lime in Tom's gloves. That stuff burns like hell, you know. There's something very strange about that young lady. Why would she have it in for Tom? Isn't that obvious? Maybe. To a man with a degree in sociology. Her mummy left her. Abandoned her. Now that's a hell of a thing. All she's got left is her daddy. Someone like Tom's competition. I hear you've let Tom Boswell go. Yeah, well, Tom was seen hanging about the house yesterday and today, and by his own admission, he'd been to the house and he knew about the coins. And like he said in the interview, he picked them up in the garage, so his prints will be all over them. With his record, we've got a fairly strong circumstantial case. But something tells me you remain unconvinced. In my experience, Alistair, the burglars usually steal things. They don't move them from the house to the garage. Only two people had easy access to the garage besides Tom. And one of them is Emma. Have you arrested Tom? We've spoken to him. Has he admitted it? He said he found the stolen things in the garage. He's lying. That's what he says. You don't believe him. Emma. You don't like Tom, do you? I don't have anything to do with him. He said that you destroyed his flowers. No! That's what he said. I never did. And they're not his flowers. It's not his garden. It's our garden. He'll say anything. He's a thief and a liar. Emma, I must ask you. Did you take those things? Hoping that we suspect Tom? What? Maybe you wanted to get back at him. No! Maybe you were jealous of him. No! It was you who first mentioned Tom's name this morning. You wanted us to think it was him that burgled this house. Dad! Why are you accusing me? Whoa, whoa. I'm saying I stole your thing. What? It was Tom. And Emma, Emma. It was Tom. Emma, He's listen. Mum wouldn't believe me. And, well, em <laughs> what is going on here? Just trying to get things straight. You have no right to speak to my daughter without me present. Oh, yes, we do, Mr. Brody. We've spoken to Tom. Say it. What did he say? 
He denies stealing anything. Because he didn't. I agree. But the fact remains that your daughter found him in the garage with the stolen gear. Which leaves the question, how did your coins and other things get in there? We have to explore the possibility that Emma may have staged the burglary. No, no, that is absurd. She dislikes Tom. Enough to stage a burglary. She may have been jealous of him. With her mother gone, all she's got is you. Well, her mother leaving was the best thing that could have happened. Emma's mother is a grasping bitch. This is all her fault. You, just what is it with women? You know, my wife, she doesn't just want a divorce. She wants to destroy me. She wants the house. She wants more than half of everything. And she'll get it. She's got a very good lawyer. A friend of mine, as it happens. No one quite knows how to turn the knife like a friend. They're bleeding me dry. You're short of money. Yes, I realise that you people find that hard to believe, but you have no idea. My VAT bill alone. Yet you paid for Tom to go on holiday. He told you. That would have given him an alibi. You care enough about him to have seen to that. Still, what's another couple of hundred quid when you're up to your eyeballs in debt? If only he'd gone. If it hadn't been for the coincidence of Tom coming back for his tools, finding the stuff in the garage, you'd have been 30 grand better off. At least it might have paid you VAT. This has used up a whole day of police time, Mr. Brodie. You can't prove anything. <laughs> no claim has been made. No. And you've got your collection of antique coins back. So we can probably draw a line under this then. Yes. No real harm done. We should throw the bucket in. You know your trouble, Alistair? You always want blood. I just want him to get what's coming to him. Think about it for a minute, Alistair. Whenever you, me, or any of us are in court again, we won't get any grief from Brody. What good's a barrister who can't look you straight in the eye? 